Salutations, respective viewers. It's George from Ireland. Well, this uh, video is a sort of a two for the price of one because they're two bits of um, royal hot gossip to uh, pack into the one video. They came hard, well, one came hard on the heels of the first, um, and they're related, related to um, uh, Prince Harry and the Duchess of Sussex. So um, they announced on Valentine's Day, that's a few days ago, that the most publicity shy woman in the world is having a baby and she that they released these um, very charming posed photos of this couple deeply in love, her lolling back on with her head on her husband's lap, gazing adoringly into his eyes. Uh, and at the same time as cradling uh, her um, midsection because she's um, in a state of graffiti. So uh, presumably the timing is significant. I mean, the PR team wouldn't wouldn't miss a trick there. They must be paying the top dollar. So I suppose they know what they're doing. And didn't didn't Princess Diana announce one of her pregnancies on Valentine's Day as well? I'm not sure if they're that erudite, even in the life of um, Prince Harry's late mother. So you may recall, because they preach that we must save the planet, that nobody should have more than two children. Well, let's hope they practice what they preach. Now, these two deserve less sympathy than most, the gruesome twosome. I can't actually um, criticise them for announcing the pregnancy because um, they are famous, like it or not, even if they never said a peep to the media for the rest of their lives, this news would come out. So they decided to manage it and reveal this news at a time that they think is uh, apposite. It's not, it's not going to cause upset, presumably. Um, and I would guess she's past the three-month stage. I don't know what the due date is. So that uh, she's out of the danger zone for, for a miscarriage. I'm not saying that there's no chance of miscarriage, but just less. Remember, of course, she claims to have suffered a miscarriage last um, July. Um, so, uh, yeah, well, well, that is that news. But if you really want the media to leave you alone, why, why would you um, give out these photos? Just don't release any photos with it. Just a one sentence announcement. So um, anyway, uh, yeah, she recently won a court battle. This is Megan against the British newspaper about her breaching her privacy by revealing some of her private correspondence. So she harps on about her right to privacy. Now, I've often I'm said that the price you pay for being a royal is you don't have privacy. But I must have a caveat. They do have a certain bare minimum privacy, the right to medical confidentiality, which she has uh, enthusiastically breached herself by revealing details of her uh, miscarriage, uh, for example. Um, or th they have a right to privacy of their private correspondence. But, you know, if, if her interlocutor then releases this correspondence, is that allowed? I mean, it could be epistolary correspondence or could be on the phone or something like that. And that was what was tested in court. So there should be no photos taken of them when they've got a reasonable expectation of privacy. That's not in a remotely public place would have no such expectation. Um, so, but, uh, you know, they should have less privacy than almost anyone else because they get so much from the public because they're supposed to serve the public. The public is not supposed to serve them. Um, you know, that's sort of financial privacy. Um, might not be as, as widespread as for other people, as, as well as for other people, because, you know, they're people of public interest and there could be some uh, clash of in interests here, conflict of interests here, if they were receiving money from unsavory characters. So um, anyway, uh, uh, Meghan Markle would have us believe she's timid, so diffident, diffident, reticent as the cat got her tongue. But if you live by the media, you'll die by the media. You can't invite them into your life when it suits you and then shoo them away when it suits you to do that. No, 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 no. You know, they are going to report you. Sometimes they'll be nice, sometimes they'll be nasty. They have the right to be catty. OK, so the, the commentary does not have to give her in, in exclusively laudatory press. The coverage could be highly critical, sometimes unfair. All right. So it's like, you know, Pearl said, politicians who complain about the media are like sailors who complain about the sea, in which case don't go to sea. I know they're not politicians, a fact sometimes lost on Meghan Markle, who often likes wading into political rows. And they're um, they're about to do this tell-all um, interview with Oprah Winfrey for no doubt a very substantial sum. Um, and uh, as for, for you know, royal, royal uh, privacy, you might remember Her Royal Highness Princess Kate. Uh, she won a case in France in 2011, was it, about uh, topless photos of her published using some sort of telephoto lens. I mean, that was under French 
um, privacy law in the UK might not be quite so extensive, but the idea is that in this private secluded uh, garden, she had a reasonable expectation of privacy and that we were very um, intrusive means were used to capture that image. So um, people have been saying that Meghan Markle, well, she doesn't really stick her all in, is that Meghan's partisans, and she does have some fanatical supporters in the United Kingdom still say that, oh, she doesn't uh, interfere. And look at all the others. People are saying she should be stripped of her title for poking her nose into affairs that don't concern her. What about Her Majesty the Queen? She vets legislation. That's outrageous. Should be she be disentitled? Now, I don't agree because she's got a unique constitutional role. She um, scrutinises some legislation which touches and concerns the Crown. She can then express a view in it. Parliament is, of course, absolutely entitled to pass any legislation that wishes. It can make or unmake any law whatsoever, even laws that it has no practical power to enforce. So, um, as uh, per the English Constitution by Walter Badgett, the monarch has the right to be informed, the right to advise, and the right to warn, and that's she's exercising that prerogative. Look at the Prince of Wales. Now, he has examined some uh, bills that would um, impact him, that would permit his tenants to purchase the houses that they rent from him. And he has um, uh, said things which have had a dissuasive effect on the government from proceeding with the said legislation. Seems to be rather wrong because he's doing so in a partisan manner. This is not consonant with a disinterested service of the common wheel. So I agree, there's wrongdoing by others. Prince Charles, he's um, often opened his big trap on the environment. Got that award, Global Environmental Citizen, way back in 2004. I actually concur with him on some environmental issues. But he still shouldn't weigh on in this. Prince William saying that um, gay people should get equality. Now, that's a fairly uncontroversial view these days. But again, got to be a prince for everyone, including the homophobes or Meghan Markle talking about racial equality. And again, I agree with her on this one. But wait a second. You're a princess for everyone. And that includes the racists. Everyone means everyone. You know, just think when it was the other way around. It wouldn't have been good to endorse racism just because that was the majority view. So... And there have been a lot of unwarranted intrusions. Admittedly, Harry and Meghan aren't the only ones who've got it wrong, but they've got it wrong more often and more severely than any others. And so often, um, you know, broken their own rules, travelling by private jets several times, not just to the south of France, but from California to Florida and so on. And they, they don't really realise the optics of this are not good. You know, lecturing people on reducing their carbon footprint from their $11 million at the end in, in Santa Barbara, wherever it is. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a bit undemocratic and concerning that uh, members of the royal household have, in, in private, been um, trying to uh, talk the government out of going ahead with certain uh, bills. Um, but more recently, the news has come that that 12 month that um, uh, Prince Harry and Princess Meghan had to ponder their future has um, elapsed. The time is up and they're not coming back to the royal fold. They can't be in half in and half out. So they're all the other titles being removed from them. Prince Harry, who was Captain General of the Royal Marines, and um, that doesn't automatically go to a royal. So remember Lord Bramwell, former Chief of Defence Staff, said that we like, we, we miss Harry, we want him here to perform his duties. But you cannot have this title, Captain General, and then perform none of the duties whatsoever. So make your mind up. We can give it to someone who is going to perform the duties. Show up, right? So talk about entitled. He thinks he wants the baubles, he wants the privilege, he wants this handle but he doesn't want to do any of the tedious glad handing. Well, tough. Uh, you've actually got to show your face. So they can't be um, you know, making the most of these commercial opportunities. Now, the trouble is, what is a commercial opportunity? Now, uh, Prince Charles, he owns lots of property. That's that he's a landlord. Is that a commercial opportunity? Arguably, the royalty have always owned property, which they've rented out. So that's not contentious. He owns the holiday in at Reading, for example, or some of the products from his his his. Uh, states, this provender, so we say Duchy of Cornwall, whatever, cheese, beef and so on, that's sold. Is that a commercial opportunity? Arguably, anyway, but I think that's met with acceptance. Um, Prince Edward, he had Arden Productions in the noughties, his television production company. He's had a commercial opportunity, it would seem to be to me. So I suppose Meghan and Harry can say, well, you know, others have done this too, but Meghan and Harry pushed the boat out much, much further. And being charging for interviews or speeches, I don't think anyone ever done that before. So they must be removed from the line of succession. People say Harry's number six, he shan't inherit. You can't be sure, just take one plane crash, one car crash, one terrorist attack, and he'd be king. Just like Prince Andrew should be removed, I know he's a bit further down, but what a disaster it would be if he was the next in line. 
So yeah, they're not coming back now. That's that's final. Uh, they've really burnt their bridges. People wouldn't have them back. Um, I know they they do have a small number of supporters, but um, they've they've really fouled their nest here and hacked off so much of the public, and they have so often um, got um, into into uh, difficulties because of the contentious positions that they have avowed. Well, uh, that's them, and we thinks we haven't heard the last of them and probably public interest in them will, will wane over the next few years. Uh, but until then, they've got to shamelessly milk their publicity. And they really lack self-awareness. We're talking about equality. Give away all your wealth then. Renounce all your titles then. And um, uh, why on earth would anyone listen to Prince Harry if he wasn't a prince? And uh, they haven't thought that one, but they've got this podium only for that reason. So don't bang on about being so egalitarian. Anyway, that's enough from me. Toodaloo.